As you can imagine, today is a very important day for me. One, that I have looked forward to every single day for more than 400 days since I was brutally taken from my world as I knew it, ripped from my family, my friends, my communities, from Renault, Nissan, and Mitsubishi, and the 450,000 women and men who comprise those companies. I have not experienced a moment of freedom since November 19, 2018. It is impossible, it is impossible to express the depth of that deprivation and my profound appreciation to once again be able to be reunited with my family and loved ones. Today is also a poignant reminder of the day precisely one year ago when I appeared before many of you as well as a Japanese judge and prosecutors in Tokyo. I pleaded my innocence by a did so while constrained by handcuffs and bound by a leash around my waist, which was used to walk me into the courtroom. I was in the midst of being held indefinitely in solitary confinement after several attempt, failed attempts at bail. I had just spent the Christmas and New Year holiday alone and in confinement, and I hadn't spoken to or seen my family for six weeks. My only contact with them were letters shown to me by lawyers through a looking glass. I had spent the previous months being interrogated for up to eight hours a day without any lawyers present, without an understanding of what exactly I was being accused of, without access to the evidence that justify this travesty against my human rights and dignity. It will get worse for you if you don't just confess, the prosecutor told me repeatedly. And this has been taped. You can look at the tapes because the tapes are being held. You can see how many times they came up about, you know, you just confess and it will be over. And if you don't confess, not only we're going to go after you, we're going to go after your family. And we're going to discover many things. Every day I woke up on nights that I was able to sleep and to make a decision. Do I fight for my innocence? Or do I do as they say? And there was no end in sight. And those conditions remained more or less the same day after day, week after week, month after month. The feeling of hopelessness was profound. And every day for over 130 days in detention, I fought for my innocence. When I was finally granted bail for the first time, and so the opportunity to share with you all what I intend to share today, I was ruthlessly thrown back in solitary confinement within 24 hours, a confinement that flies in the face of global and United Nations standards of justice.